Oh! Let's go! Oh, whoa, oh my god. <laughs> I only spun like three times. Hi. <laughs> Sorry. Hi! It feels like a little bit since we just talked, huh? How are you? How you going? How's your day? I missed you. Sorry the videos have been a little slower than normal. And I know normally they're already pretty slow. <laughs> I, uh, Zach, my editor went on break for 30 days right at a point where I decided I was going to try and take care of my personal health. And that kind of just mixed into not getting a lot done. But Zach is back. Zach is back. Zach is back. And uh, I'm back. I'm I'm ready. I, uh, I've been playing through a ton of games. I still have to review, like, Monster Hunter and, and stuff like that. And that is the next video I'm making. But before I get to that, the, an Indie World Nintendo Direct happened the other day. And, uh, not enough people care about it. It, it got a ton of views, actually. It got, like, 10 million views, which is really impressive. But I haven't seen nearly enough people talk about how kick-ass it actually was. So I've already seen it. So this is going to be kind of like a non-live reaction. That said, I think, where did I watch it? I watched it, oh, on my phone on the way to the gym. So I wasn't really paying full attention. Oh, this is really nice of them. They've broken down the timestamps. This isn't the whole video, by the way. I want to talk about a couple other things. We'll, we'll, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. But I have to come back home. I have to make my own way to help the brigades. Where am I? Road 13, Road 42, Road 67, Road 96. So already we're off to a bang, because this indie game not only looks gorgeous, but it's a procedurally generated road trip game inspired by old school road trip movies. And if that synopsis alone doesn't get you a little bit <laughs> No, I can't say that. Then uh, I don't know what will, because that sounds sick. Look at that. That's beautiful. You can play tuba. I love the tuba. Top 10 instruments, wind instruments, mind you. I think that one, I think that looks really good. Hi. Hi. Creator and developer of Aerial Knights Never Yield. A narrative run. I'm watching the wrong one. <laughs> I'm watching the one from April. Look, I know I haven't made a video in a while, and apparently I've just forgotten how to do everything. How am I watching the wrong- How did that get 10 million views, and the one from yesterday doesn't even have a million? What happened there? Watching the wrong- I can't- I'm so embarrassed. I'm so embarrassed. Well, at least this one's timestamped as well. Can't believe I did that. All right, I was gonna say, I watched- <laughs> I did watch it, and I, I do remember it starting with Bomb Rush Cyberfunk, which looks awesome, by the way. If you're not old like me, you might not know there was this really cool game called Jet Set Radio Future back on the Xbox, and it's just a blast. It was a cult hit, and this is a spiritual successor to that. It's li it's almost identical. I'm so glad they stay true to the art style and the gameplay and the music. So glad we're watching the right indie direct now. Would suck if I if I reacted to the whole. Imagine how I did a reaction to the wrong end. If I hadn't already seen it, I literally would have just sat here and reacted to the the wrong one and uploaded it, and would have felt so embarrassed. It's summertime, which is perfect for hot walks, going to the beach, or a brown lake if you live here in Texas. Whatever you're doing and wherever you're going, make sure to take a pair of Raycons with you. Raycons come with a bunch of different gel tips to fit whatever kind of weird ear hole you have. So not only are they comfortable, but they also don't stick out of your ear and droop down like Hooch's saliva slobber. Raycons are stylish and they sound great. They have 32 hours of battery life and start at about half the price of other premium wireless earbuds on the market. So I've started and I've tried to keep this quiet because I hate talking about it. But over the last two months, I have been getting back into shape. And I love them because I can run like 10 miles an hour on the treadmill with them in my ears 
and they don't fall out. And then of course I take them on my daily walks and I listen to podcasts. But if I can get real with you guys and a little closer, uh, if you've been a longtime supporter of me, you might have noticed that Raycon sponsors me every single month on the channel. They've helped me create some of the coolest and wackiest videos, like when I bought a go-kart and made it work with Mario Kart. If there's anyone left out there who still hasn't bought a pair of Raycons, it directly supports my channel. All you gotta do is click the link in the description or go to buyraycon.com forward slash beat-em-ups. You'll get 15% off and the best part, they have a 45 day happiness guarantee. So if you're like, ah, you can try them out and see if you like them. You can't get better than that. Thank you, Raycon, for once again sponsoring. Back to the video. Okay, so this game's cute. It's black and white, minimalistic Pokemon Snap without Pokemon. But it's, again, a very charming looking game. Very cutesy. A little photo adventure. Hey, Ariko, does it feel like we're going in circles here? Don't worry, Tyler. That's just how Loop Hero works. Just once, I would love to host an indie direct. Just, just, the, just so the voiceover wasn't cringe one time. Don't worry, Tyler. Oh, this one I am so excited for. I am a sucker for a certain art style, and this is it. It's so gorgeous. I love, I, I, I don't know, man. This kind of art style always takes my breath away. So you travel around on this big ship, I'm assuming, and then you can dive into the water, you can explore the lands you come across. I can only also assume it's linear, maybe? You go across the ocean's linear format, but love it. I love the way it looks. I can't wait to play it. It's time to grow your own adventure. Yeah. A garden story I've been waiting for for a long time. I downloaded it right away. I am already working on scripting it into an eShop Games Worth Buying video. It's like Stardewy. It's really just Stardewy, uh, but with a lot more combat than Stardew had. They, in my opinion, did not spend nearly enough time on, on Garden Story. That was like 30 seconds. I could have used a lot less of Necro Barista and a lot more of Garden Story for my personal taste. <laughs> Woo your weapons on romantic outings. Multiple combat styles just means more cuties to forge relationships with. After all, a couple that slays. I mean, I don't, I don't want to sound conceited. I don't have abs, but like, it's even got the plug. I actually tweeted at them when I noticed this originally, and I think all they wrote back was lol whoops. <laughs> this was crazy to me. Axiom Verge, the first Axiom Verge blew up and was extremely popular. It's a great game. They announced a sequel, which was huge news. And then nothing, it just went silent. And then randomly, with it just, here it is. And it's out now. It's just out now. It's just out now. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, it's out now. That goes for B Boyfriend Dungeon and Garden Story, by the way. We're both out now. If you love Shovel Knight, um, you might, you might love Shovel Knight Pocket Edition. Like, I, uh, it's, uh, okay. Hear me out here. This game's actually pretty fun. They sent me a code for this after the direct out of nowhere. And I just, I, you know, I downloaded it, started, it's only $5. Really good. It, it procedurally generates islands. And then you just start throwing stuff on it, whatever you want. For $5, they kind of snuck Slime Rancher in here, which I thought was weird. Like, it's literally like a, a, a 10 second spot. Slime Rancher is great. And this, in my opinion, is kind of a big get for the Switch. I mean, I know it's just an indie game, but it runs at 60 frames. Really up Nintendo Alley. Like, it's got Pokemon vibes of collecting all of these slimes. Animal Crossing vibes of taking care of a ranch. Like, it's really at home on the Switch. Gang Beasts coming to Switch. That was a huge hit, like, two years ago. <laughs> a lot of these games, I'm like, where, where have you been? You know, uh, these, like, cool announcements for Switch releases. Like, where, where, have, where have you been? You telling me you didn't figure this out sooner and capitalized on it? Let's not, don't even get me started on Fall Guys. Where is Fall Guys for Switch, by the way? Like, <laughs> talk about missing the boat. Okay, this was the whole, honestly, the whole reason I even bothered 
to react to this event. I have been talking about Eastwood for a while now because I am so freaking hyped. I know everything about this game. I am waiting for this game. It's developed by Chucklefish. Chucklefish have nailed the pixel art art style. Like, I know I know a lot of you are burnt out on pixel art games. Chucklefish is just a developer who has nailed the genre. They do such incredible work, and it's getting surreal at this point. They're like the Disney and Pixar level version counterpart of pixel art games. And this one looks like... It, it gives me Last of Us vibes in a way. It's like a, a guy and this young girl who I think might be his daughter. They're just on this adventure together through these like wastelands and there's these towns and civilians. Listen to the music. It's already giving me chills. Look at the art. Look at the world building. Look at the gameplay and the design. Like it just, I, I can already tell it's going to be one of my favorite games of the year. I've been so excited for it and the release date has been nowhere to be seen. September 16th? I am more excited for Eastwood than I am for games like Metroid Dread. Like, I'm so, I'm so ready. So that was the indie world. In my opinion, an absolute banger. Probably one of the best indie worlds we've had for a long time. Yeah, Fall Guys, still missing. Hollow Knight, I've given up. I've given up. I don't care. It's not coming. It's, it's literally not happening. Hollow Knight who? Hollow what? What night? <laughs> Never heard of it. I don't know, man. I just thought every game in here looked like a bop. And if that wasn't enough Nintendo goodness for you, if you want another live direct-ish event, there's a Pokemon Presents coming on the 18th. Um, I'm gonna try. What time is it? Oh my god. No. <laughs> Never mind. 8 a.m. my time. That is not happening. I will make a video about it and react to it because I'm really excited to see, obviously, um, Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, but mostly... The, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, Arce Arce Arceus? That is the Pokemon game I've been waiting for for years, and I'm so excited to see what they have to show. The initial trailer we got for that Pokemon game looked like cr I hate to say it, it looked poopy smoopy. Not just the visuals, I'm not, I don't care about that too much, but even, like, the Pokemon animations were, like, frame rates were weird, like, it was, like, skipping frames, like, it just looked really unfinished. Interested to see how early of a, of a demo that was for us, or if that is the game. And then Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl even had a graphical upgrade, and I didn't really talk about that. I, I poop, I pooped on it initially. I did a big old, I did a big old poopy on the visuals, and then people started yelling at me saying, would they changed it? They made it look better now. So here's HDV. No idea who HDV is, but thank you, HDV. I'm gonna, I'm gonna steal your content for my own personal growth. Obviously, the Switch OLED trailer completely knocked that out of the park and made it look completely different. Oh, it's the Switch. Oh, really? Okay, I didn't know that. So the Switch OLED, obviously, had, someone was playing Pokemon in the commercial. So that's why, it, like, it looks kind of faded. So this is the new version just off a screen in a commercial. But you can see, like, the visuals have improved so much. The bag has, like, detail. I know we're going into the bag. But the bag has more detail, the pants, like everything here. Like everything looks more, I don't want to say real, but more detailed. Like everything looks more detailed. And then you have these weird, like these harsh, like lines that look so dated in like N64. But here we have these nice blends and, and these blurs. Grass things are gone. Everything has been desaturated compared to the debut trailer. Good, because these really heavily saturated and bright colors might immediately appeal to your eyes more. But they just kind of look cheap. They kind of look like a mobile game. Real life isn't this poppy, you know? Real life is dull and depressing. Look how different the bag looks now. <laughs> he thought the bag looked good too. I love it. I love it. You know, I didn't want to pay 60 at first, but now that my bag is so much more detailed, I am ready to drop that 60. Heck, why not make it 70? You know, I pay an extra 10 for the zipper. Images and like, I can't see a difference. Like, I think they're just saying it just to cause a- No, there's definitely a difference, my guy. HDV, you're right. You're right. You get a like from me. You you can see a huge difference. But anyway, that game looks better. So, it's inter I'll be interested to see if Arceus looks better, is my point. You know, most developers seem to not want to show their games until they're close to being ready. But Pokemon is just like, yeah, we'll show you. We don't care. I'll show you the unfinished version of it. Maybe it's because when they fix it, it just makes them look better. Like, we've listened. We fixed it. But, okay, the last thing, because I've been blabbing for a while, is GDA might 
be coming to Switch. It's looking pretty possible. It's really interesting as well what's happening with this because it's not just like they're taking the games and they're putting them on Switch. So this is all like reportedly coming from Kotaku and places like that. What we know for sure is that Rockstar Games' parent company, Take Two, has confirmed it plans to release three unannounced iterations of old games alongside the current ports of GTA 5, GTA Online. So what is rumored most likely here is the three GTA games that were on PlayStation 2. So GTA 3, GD GTA Vice City, and GTA San Andreas. Pretty sure. Pretty sure I have that right. The thing that's interesting though is, again, they're not just taking the games and then throwing them on Switch. They've actually been remastered in Unreal Engine, with one source commenting they look he like heavily modified versions of the existing titles, which tells me they've, they've kind of rebuilt the game, which is good, but it doesn't stop there. Because rumor has it, the publisher also said if the trilogy sells well, they plan to remaster the original Red Dead Redemption. Now you have me. Now you got me locked and loaded. Can we all please go and buy this trilogy when it comes out? And we could replay the sequel to Red Dead 2 and have it look the same that Red Dead 2 did. So yeah, everyone go and buy the trilogy for me, please. And I'm going to buy 10 just because I want the Red Dead Redemption remaster so bad. All right, those are, you know, all the things that are exciting me in the gaming world right now. So I hope you had a good time sitting here with me today. What did you think of the indie world? Are you playing any of those games that released today? Are you excited for a possible GTA trilogy coming to the Switch? And what do you think about the bag in Pokemon? Is it baggy enough or should they bag it some more? Like the video, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. You guys are great. Bye. Should I spin again? No, I'll probably throw up.